My name is Anna Goldfinch and I'm the National Executive Representative of the Canadian Federation of Students Ontario. We lobby government and present to government on topics that have to do with youth and student issues. And one of those is unpaid internships. There are 350,000 students that are members of the Canadian Federation of Students and so we decide things on a democratic basis. We decide what we're for and what we're against. And one of the things that we've decided is that we believe that all work should be paid work here in Ontario. Students in Ontario today pay the highest tuition fees in all of Canada. They actually have to work two and a half times longer than their parents did at minimum wage in the 1970s to make their tuition fees. And so what we're seeing more and more is that students have to work harder and harder, but then they're also expected to take on unpaid work. Students are being put under more pressure than they ever have been before, and part of this pressure is due to unpaid internships. Of course, we're going to launch into what is the current law. Does anyone really know? besides the law in the back there, what the law is currently around internships, especially in, and when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about in Ontario. Anyone know the law? A little bit? Yeah. So pretty <laughs> hazy. It can be a little complicated too. Under Ontario's Employment Standards Act, there are three situations where an intern is not required to be paid. If the intern is doing the internship as part of a academic program, or uh, they're training to become part of a particular profession. But there's also one specific exemption uh, that's for trainees, and that exemption has a six-part test. A company, in order for the internship not to be paid, must meet all six of these conditions, okay? Number one is training must be similar to a vocational institute. It's got to be similar to like a college, university, what you receive. It's got to be structured, beginning and end. The training should be for the benefit mostly of you, the individual, okay? This is huge. So you should really be benefiting and learning more opposed to from Number three, which is the person providing the training or the company providing the training, should be benefiting very, very little. Under the U.S. Fair Labor Act, the same six-part test is used, and it was adopted from American case law. When it was created, it wasn't actually uh, made for interns at all, and it wasn't written with the intention of protecting unpaid interns. But over time, it has found its way into Ontario's Employment Standards Act, and we've begun to apply it to interns. I believe that we should just remove the trainee exemption from the Employment Standards Act and use other, much more clear language to determine whether or not interns should be paid. Number four, the individual is not with displaced employees, the person providing training. So if I own, let's say, a camera shop, I can't fire the person at the front desk and then say, oh, you know what, this is a great position to be an internship, I'll just make it an unpaid internship and fire my person at the front desk. Number five, is the individual is not afforded a right to become an employee of the person providing the training. Why is that there? Kind of, kind of funky. So an employer can't say, you finish these, let's say, four months of unpaid uh, internship, and then I'll hire you. Number six, the individual is, is advised at the beginning that you will receive no pay for that time. The rules in Ontario are, are very stringent. If somebody's doing an unpaid internship in the context of a, a, an academic program, as part of a university or college, it can be legal. Uh, Unpaid internships outside of academic programs are 99% of the time illegal and uh, in violation of the Employment Standards Act. You are a young puppy compared to me, but I want to answer Okay, so you're questions. totally dodging, right? No, 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 totally no, dodging. dodging. Yeah, you're dodging, I can, man. I can help all you start your own business from the day you think you're educated. Not everybody already owned by the and bank. And, 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 the, and the market can't afford right. everyone becoming an entrepreneur. Wait, wait, wait. Not wait. everybody. Yesterday, I introduced a private member's bill, the Greater Protection for Interns and Vulnerable Workers Act, that was first introduced by my former colleague, Jonah Schein. The bill does several things that are very practical and pragmatic. They're inexpensive, but they would start to bring attention uh, in every workplace across Ontario to what a legitimate internship is. One provision of my bill requires that employers notify the Minister of Labour when they bring in interns and clearly spell out expectations such as job description and hours of work. We need to make sure that if you take on an intern, you're filing that in information with the Ministry of Labour. And that would allow the Ministry of Labour to have a better idea of what's happening in Ontario. A poster in every workplace that lays out people's rights 
It would create an anonymous tip line for vulnerable workers to express their concerns to the Ministry of Labour. Another measure in my bill would bring co-op students, interns and other trainees who are currently exempted under the Employment Standards Act so that they would be entitled to some basic workplace protection. What we see too often is interns simply being hired for the benefit of the company and not being compensated for their work in any way is free labour for the company. And that's not fair. When you see a posting for an internship, if you just Google any time I'm sure unpaid internships right now, you'll find quite a lot. They must meet these six conditions. Most of them, almost all of them, do not meet these six conditions and are therefore illegal, and you must be paid minimum wage, which currently is now 1025. <laughs> The ability to get along with other people is valuable in any profession, but it is absolutely essential to the nurse. You should be strong, because as a nurse, people will depend on you. You should be trustworthy, because people will confide in you. You should be steady, dependable, self-reliant, tactful, sympathetic, and have a sense of humor. You should have a spirit of service and a sincere interest in human beings of all classes and kinds. Work integrated learning is where students also have a component of work or job experience to enhance their learning. Students in education or nursing, we're asking the provincial government to pay these students for the work that they're doing and the skills that they're bringing, but also to lead by example and show the private sector that students should be paid for the work that they're doing. I have done 11 unpaid internships. The problem with that is that those no 11 it, other right? people who wanted an entry level position were not being paid because I took their job as an intern. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, you know what? Excuse me. Come on back. I'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Hi there. I'm Nagib Gouda. I'm president of Career Edge Organization. Career Edge came about in 1996 when a group of business leaders got together with this wonderful idea that what people really needed was that first break, that springboard to launch their careers. And what a better springboard than paid internships. You get on the job learning, you get coaching, you get mentoring, and you come out the other side ready to start a wonderful new career.